Hello there. It's been a while. I was supposed to do that Linux audio demystified video, but when I started doing that, it just made more sense putting next to what Windows does and what Mac does, and I think this would also then apply to broader audience, which is good, because we want broader audience to see that you can also do this stuff in Linux. So, without further ado, computer audio demystified by a Linux guy. Now, I did my research, but in case I get something completely factually incorrect, just put a comment down and I will pin it up. So, it all starts with your hardware, processor, your graphics card, your USB ports, not the devices, and hard drive. There is something called kernel, and kernel is the lowest level that rules over all hardware. Nothing gets past kernel. And that's true in Windows, Mac, and Linux. Now, when there's going to be like new devices, the kernel gets extended. In Windows, it's called kernel space drivers. In Mac, there's kernel extensions, and in Linux, it's kernel modules. Now, Kind of same thing, different name. Now there's different philosophies when this get extended and when it's a user space thing, but that's out of the scope of this video. I'm talking exclusively about USB audio devices in this one, although there's also like Firewire devices and maybe even PCI Express devices, but USB is the most common. And in USB there's something called device classes, and the manufacturer of the audio interface has already fulfilled one requirement to become a USB audio class compliant device, and this is true for most of the audio interfaces out there. Not all, but most. And the same applies for MIDI. So MIDI is completely standardized. There's no drivers more MIDI, so all kernels can talk with these things. Now, what does the USB audio class compliant protocol tell for the kernel? Well, it tells that someone just plugged in an audio device with some amount of inputs, some amount of outputs, and it supports following sample rates and bit devs. Now, this is already everything you need from audio interface. When you are doing music recording or when you're doing a studio recording, you don't need more features than this. So this is why the audio device can work perfectly even when there's no manufacturer's drivers installed to the system. So that's the kernel. Kernel can do that. What you want to do is you want to use your DAW. And the door wants to use the device. So how does it do it through the kernel? And now we have to look different operating systems separately. In Windows, there's something called Windows Audio Engine. And on top of that engine, there has been built different services or API layers that your door could access if it would support those. Now there's something called X-Audio, Direct Sound, MME, Kernel Streaming, and uh, Windows Audio Session API. And there are also others, but I just you know added these here. Now Direct Sound, MME, and Kernel Streaming are really old things. They don't have place in the modern world anymore. X-Audio 2 is for gaming, so those things we can just you know get rid of. Wasabi is the modern Windows Audio framework, but all the desktop applications are generally using. But the problem is that it's on top of the Windows Audio Engine and itself also they are not really optimized for low latency so they are not a good option to use in your DAW. It is a slow route to take. But you guys on Windows already know what you're supposed to be doing and you're supposed to be going to the manufacturer's website and download the ASIO drivers. And notice that the ASIO driver is not on the Windows Audio Engine layer, it's kernel space driver usually that provides the ASIO interface that your DAW likes to be using. But in case your audio interface manufacturer is not like that nice, there's no drivers, but still your DAW wants to use ASIO. Your only option is ASIO for all. But notice that ASIO for all is again built on top of the Windows Audio Engine layer, which means that it's going to be way slower than ASIO would be. There is actually also a third option, because the Wasabi that is on top of the Windows Audio Engine is actually Wasabi in the shared mode. There's also something called Wasabi in the exclusive mode, which is bypassing the Windows Audio Engine completely. In case your door supports Wasabi and you can put it in the exclusive mode, then the door takes exclusive control of the device and nothing else can use it. But that is quite low latency rule. Now, even though ASIO for all is also optimized for latency, it is still on top of the Windows Audio Engine and Wasabi is not having all the same functionalities that ASIO has, you might try which one suits best for you. Now, of course, 
the manufacturers as your drivers are the number one choice always. Now, the Wasabi with the shared mode is actually the one that all the other applications in Windows are using. So if you're going to do a browser and you're you know, watching YouTube videos, you should see that in the audio mixer that you actually have now. Browser open and you can even control the volume. Next, let's do Mac. Same thing, in your door, you want to use the audio device and somehow it goes through the kernel. So, USB class compliant devices, so this would be the kernel extensions layer. I don't really know if it has any good name in Mac, but it abstracts into something called core audio. And together the core audio and the uh, whatever kernel layer is, this is actually quite good performance. Much better performance than what is in the Windows. Now, core audio is actually the only thing there. That's the absolute only thing there. All the applications, your door and everything, they use core audio. Simple is beautiful. When core audio is this good, and it of course must be a slightly complicated for some basic applications to use audio things. So yeah, there are frameworks like AV Foundation, but that is essentially just the simplification layer of the core audio that some applications might be using, but they're still or using the core audio. Now there are of course also manufacturer's drivers available for some of the audio interfaces in Mac, but what those manufacturer's drivers do is they extend the capabilities of core audio, but it's still core audio. It just supports the audio interface that you have better. And that's Mac in nutshell. It's simple, it's, it's beautiful. Next up, Linux. So. In Linux, again, you want to use the audio interface in your door. Now, the list of DOS is a little bit shorter here, but all the good ones are there. In Linux, the kernel extension is called Advanced Linux Sound Architecture, or ALSA. Now, ALSA already provides its own interface that the DOS can already use. And this is a really low level, really fast. And this is actually the recommended way of using DOS in Linux if you don't have to do anything else with that audio device at the same time. Because when you're using ALSA, it takes exclusive control of the audio device, which means that you cannot use it at the same time, for instance, to listening YouTube music when you have your door open and it has the exclusive access to the hardware. So there is also something called Jack Audio Connection Kit and uh, that is kind of like the professional audio framework that is a really mature, many people use it and it's kind of like this audio session management, it's all low latency and it's a very nice, you have this node-based linking of different applications together so you can actually link multiple doors or what I do is Ardor and Hydrogen which are both separate applications, I link them with a low latency connection together and I use Jack for that. Now, Jack, again, is a little bit professional for some specific use cases, like just outputting sound, for instance, from the YouTube videos. So then there is something for the desktop audio, which is Pulse Audio. So Pulse Audio is kind of like the simple audio system in Linux that other than professional audio applications tend to use. Now, there's a bit of a problem here because Pulse Audio and Jack are kind of in their own domains and that has annoyed some people. No, even though the Windows is even more messed up, but in Mac it's so beautiful just having that one core audio thing. But in Linux, if you wanted to have Pulse Audio things, you know, going to the Jack routing thing, you had to do a Pulse Audio bridging there and this bridging did not separate different applications and things like that. So it's a little bit like a hacky solution there and many people wanted to do something about that and they did. And it's called Pipewire. Now, how can these applications that only support Jack or Pulse Audio, now how can they work with Pipewire? Well, that's because Pipewire actually provides its own implementations of Jack and Pulse Audio, and it has its own session management layer above that. And that's how now all audio applications in Linux work the same way as they would be in core audio system in Mac. Plus, we have this really nice node-based routing thing going on. That is the thing that got me into Linux when I saw that. It came from the jack, but now it's all over every single desktop thing that you can have. But we are still talking about those USB class compliant devices. So how about the manufacturer's drivers to get things going fast and smooth with the audio devices? 
Well, there isn't any. There really, I, I, I don't know any manufacturer that would provide drivers to Linux. However, there is another cool thing that we can do in Linux that is not possible in either Mac or Windows, and that is that we can use different kernel low latency kernel so that is for instance what i'm using so low latency means that you get faster response out of the usb device which means lower latency but it has a drawback of having a smaller throughput but the throughput is not as critical as the latency with the audio devices which is why we want to use low latency kernel and that gives really good performance with the USB class compliant devices. Now, of course, the device itself and the implementations in the USB layer and blah, 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 those do have a factor, so it depends on your audio card, how well it works. But in general, the common ones like the Focusrite or Behringer and things like those, they work really, really well in a Linux environment. So let's have a little wrap up. In Windows, we have those Azure drivers that you're supposed to be using, or you can experiment with Wasabi in exclusive mode or Azure for all if that's really necessary, but use the Azure if you can. In Mac, if it works, it works. That's it. In Linux, the recommended option is ALSA, but that is then exclusive access and you cannot use the audio device at the same time with any other part of your system. If you need that, then use Jack. Also, if you have Pipewire, because DAW doesn't know there's Pipewire. The DAW only thinks it uses Jack. And Jack is fast. Pipewire implementation of Jack is actually faster than Jack 2. I tested this myself. That's my recommendation. <laughs>